Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's show. This week we are definitely doing something a little bit different. You know, it's all about learning and that for me is the big thing about anything. It doesn't matter if it's hunting or fishing. Hey, today we are with the, the DNR here and we're with Adam Nichols and Scott. Hey Scott, you know what, let's tell everybody what we're doing today. Today we're out uh, hoop netting for targeting flathead catfish. Uh, we do catch some channels as well, but Part of our annual survey work for evaluating the flathead population. So yeah, we've got we've got eight hoop nets out. Uh, we do this every year about this time of year um, to evaluate you know size, structure, uh, catch effort. We also tag fish with koi tags. It's along their dorsal, and we'll show you during the show as we're tagging them. Um, same tag as like a walleye, like what we tag for Same walleyes. color too? It's green. A green, green tag, green okay. Yeah. Do you want them to pull that tag off or just write the information down and s s set the fish free? Yes. How do you want to work it? We want them to write the information down and then release the fish with the tag intact. Okay. Uh, that way, the fish is caught again down the road, we still can get that data on it. You know, if you do catch a fish and it's harvestable, legally harvestable, Treat the fish like it's not actually tagged. So treat it, if you would keep it, keep it. If you want and you would release it, then, you know, do it that way. Um, okay. We don't want the tag to, you know, kind of have differential treatment. We want to kind of see what's happening um, with harvest. But as you kind of look around on this river, um, you kind of see areas that have exposed root lots, down trees. That's the kind of habitat we like to see. Uh, but in some cases, we can enhance that and, and do tree drops and other projects to help, uh, you know, make sure we got the right habitat out here as well. So right. why the net in this spot here? Uh, it's just, uh, we've kind of got historical areas that we've, we've set nets over the years. So uh, we've tried to stay similar to that for comparing catch and that sort of thing. Um, but they were obviously placed originally thinking that you'd catch a flathead here. So, okay. You know, you've got some log jams below you coming out of a deep hole, um, coming along this bend, and you know, that's where flatheads kind of like to come out. So uh, we're right in the midst of evaluating and kind of seeing where things are at. And you know, one thing that we don't have is a flathead catfish club. It would be great if somehow we could get a club going so that we could have that outlet. What I like to do is collect this information, take it to the clubs, get people involved, talk about what we're seeing, yeah, and you see we're fairly clean right now, but once we pull one nut, it'll be a different story. Okay, let's get her done. <laughs> you ever see one of these? Oh, they're cool. You know, a lot of times these tags, uh, obviously these fish are on the bottom and they'll get a lot of sediment built up on it. If you rub it too hard, are you gonna get the ink off it too, or? Not, not usually. This side is actually the tag number. It says DNR and then it's got that tag number on there. Okay. Um, so make sure you get that. Uh, the other side has our address. So if you wanna mail the tag in, it's got the address on there for you. That way we can track it down to that fish and get some information, you know, when we caught it, you know, how much it's maybe grown since then and that sort of thing. Obviously this time of year they're moving up into the rivers for spawning and then for overwintering habitat they'll move back down to like the upper river lakes to the deeper holes for, for overwintering. <laughs> A lot of people think that there's blue cats in our system. There is no blue cats in this system. Correct. Right. That A channel cat will get very blue at times, yes. right? And is that a female that typically gets that real dark blue? Because I, I've had guys swear sure. that they caught a blue cat, and I've, I'm yes. a catfish. Yeah, man. we get it often. Right. Um, and a lot of times, it seems like it's sometimes those bigger fish. So, wow, that's a big, you know, they think it's too big for a channel cat. Um, okay. So they think, oh, that's gotta be like a blue cat. You know, seems like maybe a little bit more of that coloration during the spawn. But That's what I've seen to see. What species spawns first, the channel cat or the flathead? I think it's the channel cat. They're a little bit earlier and then the flathead is, flathead water temps, they're aiming 70 is kind of like what they're aiming for, okay. but they'll go up to 80, I believe. So it really in river systems that can fluctuate. If you get a cold front, they might, they might hold off for a week or two. You know, I, I think right now we're getting in that spawning phase and the males, males and sometimes females will kind of create the nest. Um, they'll spawn under 
you know, exposed root wads and stuff that are under the bank. Yeah, and it takes uh, a couple days up to a week for the eggs to hatch, and then the, the fry will actually stay around that nest for a few days, or maybe even a week or two, depending on conditions, and the male stays there with them um, and, and guards. Is a flathead a catfish, or is it a bullhead? I'm going catfish. <laughs> I don't know. You're going to say catfish. I'm going to say catfish. Okay. Yeah. The same family, right? The eating quality of a flathead versus a, a, a channel cat. A channel cat is very oily, mm -hmm. where a flathead is not oily. The meat is super firm. There's not much of a fat line in there. Uh, I think a lot of it comes down to their diet. Dot. Flatheads focus on live stuff. Exactly. They'll eat a carp, sucker, bluegill, bass, walleye maybe if it swims by. They also eat themselves. Channel cats are more of a more of a bottom feeder and they kind of pick up whatever's coming along. My dad was a huge, huge cat fisherman and we ate cats year round, but a lot of it at that time, you know, what his deal was that we had a milk tank at home with artesia running in it and now you can't do that, obviously transport a live fish, but he would always put the channels inside that milk tank and clean them out. All right, well, let's uh, let's see what we got going here. Oh, hustler. Well, you got bibs on, right? Yeah. So that, you're putting that in her now? Yep. Okay, so that's a pit tag you're calling. It's a, it's a pit tag. It's kind of like a microchip. That's know, like, interesting. Like dogs have. So this is what it is. Wow. And the beauty with these is they, they're staying that fish. You they know, can't rub it off or for, anything. For generally the life of the fish. Sometimes you lose some, but you know, these white tags after a year or two, oftentimes they, they rub off rub or off something. Or yeah. Get pulled out. But these give us <laughs> tracking on these fish when we handle them. Um, you know, just a lot better tag retention. To me, everybody, this is probably one of the most beautiful fish in the system. I, I just think that they are so cool. Now, how can you tell that it's a male? Well, do you want to give them the name? Yeah, I want to know this because this is something I, have. I, 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 I should know this, but I don't know. The female will have three holes. Okay. The male will have two. That's interesting. Now, we can, we can tell because we've seen enough of them. You know, here's the one hole. There's the other. Okay. And then this is all skin, skin yep. color in between. Yeah. So we know that's a male. What do you estimate this fish as far as age wise? Well, you know, generally I think on average for a fish to hit 42 inches out here, uh, we're looking at around 20 or so. Obviously each fish is different. Could be, you know, 15, somewhere in there. Okay. Um, it's just hard to, you know, that's the averages. But, you know, like Scott was saying earlier, it can vary. All right, I'm gonna say 22 pounds. That was off by a couple pounds. What we do is we'll, we'll keep one uh, female fish in these nets. Oh, that's and, interesting. And that generally, it, it helps somewhat with the flathead catch, but the bigger thing is it helps keep down the channel cat catch. Like the first day, we set nets with no bait, obviously. And this um, is the bait. Yep, <laughs> we, had, uh, we had over 500 channel cats that day. <laughs> That's another absolutely beautiful fish. 21.3, boy, it doesn't look that big. Yeah, look at the head on him though. It's not super good example. You know how there was that big stretch of skin color yeah. in between there? Right. And now it's pretty much pink the whole way. Okay. And you can kind of see the darker spot. One, one two. two. Ah. There's always one yep. at the end here. Okay. That's what you want to see come up. I'll give you 20 bucks if you put it in there. Oh, that's, well, that's, that's sitting there in a heartbeat. Look at that. You want that? I can't understand why they call him a flat. She's like, I had enough of you looking at you. Apparently she didn't think I was very attractive. So Adam, you know, I'm looking at this one, you look at their tail and, and the back's all beat up. Is that from spawning? Uh, it, it's it's probably from some of that and, you know, I mean, it was in a net overnight too. Okay. So it can have some of yeah. the in there. Um, it's obviously why we check them every day to get those fish back out. I mean, we see, you know, old scabs and stuff, obviously when they're in the rope wads and that sort of thing, so. The old sea clamp, I learned that too, how to get a flathead under control. Turn that tail right up towards their, their head. Adam calls it sea clamping. It's kind of like putting you into a headlock. 
everybody at home take a good look at this fish right here right there you guys email us how big you think she is as far as weight wise she's 38 inches right 38 8. let's see who's the closest as far as what you estimate the weight on these Softy, too. What are you there laying there? <laughs> what the hell? Oh boy, I like to hear that. Oh boy, it's in, it's in, it's in almost structure. Heavy. Now that's a that's a big fish right there. So Adam, let's talk real quick and I'll let this channel go, but let's tell everybody, you know, obviously the sizes, channel cats get big, you mm -hmm. know, not pretty close to that I would say. But let's show them the difference between a channel cat and yeah in a flathead. I mean one of the things is the tail. If you look at that tail okay. on the channel, see how it, it's got a forked tail. Fork tail. Where you know flathead's more flattened. Um, that's one of the easiest things to kind of look at. Okay. To start with. Um, flatheads also have a longer lower lip. So that ah, that's lip interesting. Yep. Comes up to where if you look at that, it's it's the opposite. The eyes too. Like if you face them, face that down, you know, it's like a flathead's kind of looking up at you a little more, or these a little looking more like down. down. You know, sometimes even those bigger fish will kind of have that bluish tinge to them. But they're what we have here are flatheads and, and channel cats. Look at the belly on this fish. So I want you guys to guess if this is a male or a female. Male or female? Okay. Female. female yep. yep. So you guys, is a flathead actually native to our system here on the Winnebago system? From what I read, it was I didn't think so. more to the Mississippi South. Okay. Yeah, and the uh, Wisconsin River system. Any they, idea they how they got in here through the the, the channel in the Portage? The okay, portage that's canal it. Back in the day. Built for fishermen, built by fishermen. Um, really, that says it all. It's the family here. It's it's not a big big conglomerate. It's a family. They treat you. You feel like you're in a family. You know. When you put those two together, an amazing product and amazing people, it's just the type of company you want to be involved with. Not only because of just the great boats, but because of the camaraderie that the Warrior family has. The customer service is amazing. Uh, they never leave you hanging. So come join the Warrior family. You know, flathead is one of my favorite fish to eat. You know, and the part I love about flathead is that there is no fishy flavor at all. And you think about channel cats, they're very oily. You can look at this meat, it's really snow white. It's super firm, and like I said, you can cook it any way you want it. You can bake it, you can boil it, you know, and dip it in butter like you would lobster, or you can deep fry it. And today I'm gonna deep fry it. I've got a bunch of cracker crumbs ground up here. And the other part I like to do is I love this lemon peppered flavored seasoning from Leroy's here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that into a, my mixture here of cracker crumbs. Cracker crumbs are probably one of my favorite types of breading. I don't know, I just like the way it, when it gets done, it's light. And you don't need much breading on fish that tastes this good. So what I'm gonna do is put in a bunch of pieces here. I got them all cut up. Put the lid on, shake them up. Like I said, this is no doubt one of my favorite fish to eat. Got the charred deep fryer all ready to go, fresh grease. Down she goes. You have to cook it just a little bit longer than you would normal fish because it is real firm. Flathead is about the only fish that I know of that you actually eat the belly meat. There's no other fish that I would even think about eating the belly meat. Again, I always give it just a little bit more 
because I chunk it up. Hey, I'll tell you what, that flathead is absolutely a delicious fish. If you get that opportunity to catch one of these and it's of legal size, no doubt, give it a try. Hey, make sure you bleed the fish out first. I do that with all my fish. It makes just a huge difference. And the other part is, remember, you can only keep one flathead a day, and there is a size limit on it, so wherever you're fishing, make sure you guys check out the regulations. I myself try to keep it where I only keep two to three flatheads a year. I love fishing them. Hope you guys enjoyed what you guys see here. We'll see you guys later. Mm. Oh. Everybody. Yeah. What are you talking about? This hasn't been a good one. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people really have a chance to see like this many flatheads, you know, at one time. Yeah. And just to really see the size of them. So on average, how old is a flathead before it spawns the first time, Adam? More than six years? Five to seven. Five to seven, okay. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, plant. That is a plumber. We got sandals. We got snapping turtles. Hard work. I guess I'm right. That's the tip of the week, right there. Good protein. Well, I'll tell you what, Adam and Scott, that was a very enjoyable morning for sure. You know, just to really kind of see how this all works and to see all them different flatheads is, is pretty cool. You know, the work that you guys are doing is, is no doubt very important. You know, and a lot of people out there are going to want to see this data. And let's tell them how they can, can check out all the research and all the data that you guys have been collecting over the last how many years now? Over 20. Over 20 decades. years, holy yeah. moly. Our reports get posted online. It'll take us um, probably this winter to get everything entered, analyzed, um, and, and get reports out. So um, we, we do annual reports uh, of the netting, and then we do electro fishing later this uh, this summer. It's on the, on the DNR webpage. You gotta, okay. You know, look under the counties. Um, and you, it just goes for any any reports throughout the state. You go to the DNR webpage, look for survey reports, fish survey reports, and uh, you can look by county, uh, and, and those will be posted on there. So, in how many different counties are you guys doing catfish surveys on or flathead surveys on? Well, this is the, we we handle the Upper Fox here. Okay. Uh, and then uh, obviously the Wolf River as well as part of the system. That's kind of where we prioritize our, our catfish work. For right the, for the Winnebago system area. Okay. Yeah. And you were saying before the biggest fish that you guys have seen this year so far has been almost just over 40 pounds on. Yep, just over 40 pounds. Um, we had a, a couple. We had a couple over 40. Yep. The yeah. The biggest one was close to normal 42. Jeez, that's yeah. a big fish for sure. Yep. You know. Yep. What is your feeling, your personal feeling, on where this whole survey is going as far as where, you, where the numbers of flatheads are sitting right now, or is it just too early to really to get a good grip on it? Well, I mean, we obviously have some good historical data to compare to. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we're, we're in the process of evaluating the rate change that was put in in 2009 uh, and, you know, seeing how things are adapting. You know, obviously you've seen today we're we're koi taking fish as well, and we're hoping to you know continue doing that and getting anglers involved with reporting tags. 
um, you know, there's there's some some projects out there that that might help us out with better understanding, you know, flathead management in general and what's going on. Um, we're thinking potentially trying to get some funding for a reward tag study. Okay, uh, and similar. you guys did that on the walleyes a few years ago. Yeah. Or let's tell everybody a little bit about that, how that all works. It was a hundred dollar wow. uh, pink reward tag. Yep, and that was that was really successful in, in evaluating exploitation and, and the overall tagging program. Hey, I'll tell you what, everybody, I want to thank uh, again Scott and Adam for the awesome morning that we had and for inviting us out here to really get a better idea of really the things that go on in our system. I personally love to fish flatheads. I don't get a lot of opportunity to, to do it as much as I'd like to, but it's cool just to experience the things that we got to experience, and really that's what life's all about. Hey, like every week, we want to give special thanks to all of our military men and women for the great service that they have given this country and continue to give this country and along with all of our firefighters paramedics and no doubt all of our law enforcement agents thank you for your service hey remember we are still living in the greatest country in the world and no doubt it is a great day to be alive and the best part is we'll see you guys again next week Well, you know you're not getting to get skunk. When the bait is gone, then you know we got a problem. <laughs>